Hey, Andy here from buildahottub.com. In this video, we're gonna look at how we can build a DIY concrete hot tub. So let's go ahead and take a look. Okay, so behind me here, you can see a beautifully built concrete poured DIY hot tub. And this was built by one of my customers, Kyle, out of Colorado, USA, and it's a absolutely fantastic tub. Now in this video, we're gonna go through all of the different steps that Kyle took in order to build that DIY concrete hot tub. So where do we need to start? Well, we've got to start at the planning stage, and the planning stage is really, really important. Planning, you're not only planning where you're gonna have your hot tub, you're also gonna be planning number of jets, how deep it's going to be, the layout, where you're going to have your seats, where you're going to have your skimmer. All of these are important parts of the planning stage. Also, where is your control room going to be situated? Now, the control room, you if you followed on this channel, I talk about the control room a lot. It is the central key to having a fantastic hot tub. Is it going to be above ground? If it's above ground, you're going to need to have self-priming pumps. Is it going to be below ground? How far away is it going to be from your actual hot tub? All of these are key elements of the planning stage and they're elements that we need to get right from the outset. If we have a bad plan, however good the build is going to be, it's going to fail. So the planning stage is really, really important. There's a couple of ways that I can certainly help you with the planning stage. In my online shop, and I'll put some links below the video, there are plans that are already done for you. These are suitable for DIY built concrete poured hot tubs. Also, there's an online course that you can take that will help you to go through all of the planning stages and actually design that perfect concrete hot tub. And finally, if you're looking for a custom design, get in touch, I can certainly help you with that. And I can help you design that perfect concrete poured hot tub for your backyard. So a quick summary of the planning stage, get it right, spend some time doing it properly, and then the rest will slowly fall into place. So what's the next stage? Well, the next stage is very much preparing the area. So if you're gonna go below ground, you're gonna to need to do a bit of excavation. And you can see behind me that the very initial stages of this particular tub are excavating the area. So this was a, a four foot deep, I believe. And you're gonna to have to go down deeper than the four foot because you've also got to put the pad or the hot tub base that you're gonna pour with concrete as well into that space. So you can see behind me here that that concrete pad or that concrete base for the hot tub has began to be formed. And what you can see is that there's an outer wooden form inside of that you have crushed type one or crushed rock that's been compressed down with a, a whacker and that then forms the, the initial base and it helps to spread the weight of that concrete when it's poured. The, the actual base itself should be ideally six inches thick. You should have a two inch of that crushed material underneath. So you're looking at around between eight to 10 inches that you're gonna to need to add in addition for your actual base. Once you're ready to pour, you're gonna need in some rebar and you can see that we've got the rebar mesh in there. Now that rebar mesh isn't sat on the ground. You can see that it's lifted up and that's so that the concrete can flow under it and the mesh sits somewhere in the middle and that just adds the strength to your concrete base. So that's kind of key. And you're also gonna to want to consider, if you're doing a poured concrete hot tub, you're gonna need some rebar in your walls and you're gonna to want to be able to tie those into the base as well. So it's at this point that it's quite good to have some risers coming up from the base that enables you to tie in your walls to that base with the rebar structure. Now, I'm not a structural engineer, so you may want to consult one of these before you actually go ahead and create a rebar structure. But the structure that you can see behind me is done off six inch centers, I believe. It's a number three rebar, which is around 10 millimeters or 0.4 inches thick. And that is giving this particular build, which Kyle did have checked by a structural engineer, enough strength to take the 2,600 gallons of water 
that this particular tub is going to hold. With your rebar structure, depending on where you are in the country or where you are in the world, your authorities might have different regulations on bonding that particular structure. Now, what bonding is or grounding is it's connecting a grounding loop all the way round your, your hot tub. It's attached to all of those different rebar structures and then it's attached to a, it's normally around a four or a five foot spike that is then driven into the ground to enable you to, to ground or bond that rebar structure uh, just to make it safe in, in case of you know, electricity, lightning, that kind of thing. So please do check because these regulations do vary from authority to authority. The last thing that you want to do is have the uh, building inspector come and tell you you need to pull it all back because it hasn't been grounded properly and it's part of the regulations. So well worth checking out before you actually go ahead and create that rebar structure. Once you have the rebar structure in place, the next phase of the build is the, the inner form. So the form or the mold is what we're gonna use. We're gonna create that out of wood and that is gonna create the walls when we pour in the concrete. So the first stage of this is putting the inner wall in and the inner wall, as you can see behind me, that sits on the inside of the rebar. It shouldn't be right up to the rebar. Again, you're looking for your rebar to fall roughly in the middle of your wall. Once you have the inner wall in place, the next stage of the build is you're gonna add your plumbing. So your plumbing is gonna be tied into the rebar. You can see on the images and the video behind me here how that plumbing is attached. It's been tied with, with metal ties and it's been cut into the wooden form. Now it goes through the wooden form and then it's capped off the other side as well because you, obviously when you pour that concrete, you don't want that to be seeping out through the front of your plumbing. So at this stage, you should be able to go all the way through, all the way round your hot tub with all of the plumbing. So you've got your inward flow of plumbing. Remember, you've got those two bottom drains. They usually connect to your skimmer and that's then gonna go to the front of your pump in your control room, wherever that is gonna be located. Then you've got your outward flow or your jet plumbing where the water is gonna come from the top or the side of the, the pump and it's gonna head back and it's gonna go back into your hot tub through those gunite bodies and through your jets. So there's a complete system that you're gonna to need to have in place before you even think about putting the exterior form or the, the, the exterior retaining wooden mold to give us that perfect wall. Once you have the exterior in place as well, you're almost ready to start the pour. However, you've got to remember there is a huge weight of concrete when you're pouring the concrete into the, the form or the mold. So it's gonna need to be braced and it's gonna need to be braced really, really well. You can see behind me that just the amount of wood and bracing that has been used because the last thing that you want when you're pouring your form is those wooden form walls to actually move and bow. If they do, you're not gonna get a perfectly vertical, perfectly flat wall. It's gonna be bent and you really don't want that. Huge amounts, as I say, of weight that you're gonna need to hold back. So if anything, go on the heavy side with the wooden bracing just to make sure that nothing is gonna move when you do pour that concrete. The thing with a concrete poured hot tub is you're generally gonna do this in stages. So you've seen already that the first stage is we're gonna pour the base. Then on top of that base, we're then gonna put the rebar in for the sides. We're gonna put the forms in. So base first, then we're gonna do the exterior walls. Once we've done those exterior walls, then we can move in and start looking at the internal seating or any steps that you may have. But with a poured concrete hot tub, you do need to build it up in stages. You can't just go ahead and pour the whole thing at once. It doesn't work like that. It's much, much easier to actually create it in those stages, base, 
outer walls and then work on the interior with those different forms. And at each stage, you're gonna do a wooden form, you're gonna do an internal rebar structure, and then you're gonna add any additional plumbing that's needed at that point as well. So when it comes to pouring your concrete, I would definitely suggest that you have it delivered and you get it pumped in. The reason that I suggest this is if you're mixing it by hand, I'm reliably told that the, the different levels or the different pores are called lifts. Each of those different lifts is gonna look slightly different. If you're mixing by hand, it's quite hard to get exactly the same consistency each time. So I would definitely recommend having it delivered. When you do order your concrete, you can order it with the waterproofing additive already in there. The reason that concrete is porous is because of the air that is actually inside of it. So when you're adding the, the chemical additive into that concrete that you're then gonna pour into your hot tub, what that is doing is it's actually removing air from your concrete. So by removing air, we reduce the the amount of, I guess, porousness, that's not really a word. Uh, I can't think what the actual word is, but we, or permeability might be a better option, but introducing that agent removes the air and it makes it more waterproof. Now it's not completely waterproof as a uh, material, so we are gonna need to treat it. And that's really the next stage of the, the build. So what you can see behind me here is a finished form the molds have been removed and what's left now is just the bare concrete. There will be a few areas that will need to be touched up and smoothed out, maybe sanded down a little. Once that process has been done, then the next stage is actually to, to put on that waterproof coating. Now there's lots of different manufacturers out there, companies like Seeker, Ardex, um, there's many, many more, all available from good hardware stores, you know, the likes of Home Depot, etc. You will find a waterproofing agent. Now, this particular one that was used on this build, it required that the the agent, or the, it wasn't really a paint, but I, I will call it a paint for this uh, for this video, was applied in one direction first. So it was applied, you know, for example, horizontally across the tub first left to dry for a couple of days and then it was a second coat was applied vertically and, and that just gave it a, a total waterproofing element and the last thing that you want is water escaping from that poured concrete hot tub once you've uh, once you've finished everything so get that waterproofing layer in next it's time for tiling so if you're going to go to the extent of pouring a concrete built hot tub, I would definitely recommend that you finish it off with tiles. Yes, you could finish it off with some kind of an epoxy paint, but if you are gonna go to those efforts, because it is an effort to make the form, I would definitely recommend that you're gonna get the best possible finish using tiles, and I would highly recommend swimming pool mosaic tiles. Yes, they are a bit more expensive, but the end result, is well, well worth it. And you can see behind me here just how good that actually looks when you have applied the mosaic tiles. Generally, you can get a grout and adhesive that's actually one material, so you don't need to do it separately. Uh, again, it must be swimming pool grade. It must be designed to be underwater permanently. Some of the ones that you get for wet rooms and bathrooms are only kind of water resistant. You must use a swimming pool grade that is designed to be submerged in water. Otherwise, you're gonna end up with those tiles lifting off over time. And again, you definitely don't want that in your concrete poured hot tub. So, tiling done, what's next? Well, you're gonna clean it all down. Uh, it shouldn't take too long. You're then gonna leave it to cure for the amount of time that is recommended on whatever material or adhesive or grout that you actually used. And that will say on the packaging, usually it's a couple of weeks cure time, so please bear this in mind. Again, it's not worth 
cutting corners here. You want it to last. If you've spent all this time, effort and money on building this poured concrete hot tub, you definitely don't want it falling apart. So adhere to those guidelines. They are the longest, I guarantee, two weeks of your life while you want to just fill it and get in. Definitely make sure that you wait and, and don't rush things here. When it comes to filling the tub, I guess you've got a couple of options. You can use a hose pipe and leave it running. A hose pipe, it will take some time. Or as Kyle did with this particular build here, you can actually have a, a water delivery. Um, it was a couple of hundred bucks, but it saves a huge amount of time and you can just kind of fill it instantly from a truck. Depending on the time of year that you have built your tub and maybe how long it's taken you to do it, in Kyle's case, he'd actually done it over the wet season in, in late autumn, uh, early winter, and it was very rainy. Because he had pipes that were underground, every time it rained, earth, soil had got into those pipes, they'd settled. So when he filled it up for the first time and he turned on, as soon as he turned on his pump, his beautifully clear, beautifully clean hot tub just filled with dirt and mud. And it then took him a good six hours to actually clean it, declog all of the jets. So be really mindful that you, you might want to kind of back flush some of your pipe work before you actually go for the main fill, just to make sure that all of that earth, dirt, anything that's actually got into the pipes during the build stage, doesn't end up clogging up your jets and making that beautiful clean hot tub just like a big mud pit. So in this short video we've covered the whole process here of building a concrete poured hot tub. Now if I can help you in any way please do get in touch. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe to the channel. Really appreciate it. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this video useful and I'll see you on the next video. If you've liked this video, please do like, share and subscribe to the channel. I'll see you on the next video.